in listening to some of uh, Kirk's side sessions, of which I, I didn't get uh, my fill of Kirk and the players while at Media Days, I did uh, sit on, on Luke Lachey and Jay Higgins. I missed Cooper DeGene, missed uh, Kirk's side sessions. But, you know, he raises some good points in the midst of this gambling investigation about how for the fans entertainment for the fans uh, pleasure for the money making aspect of it all of this is shoved down everyone's throats meaning the gambling lines the point spreads the over unders the talk about all of it and then you've got the players who are <laughs> the product but they're not allowed to partake. Now, of course, they shouldn't be allowed to partake, but it's still kind of a contradiction of sorts in terms of. Well, can, it, can NFL players bet on NFL games? No, of course not. Okay, so what's the difference? Well, that's that's not what I'm that's not what I am. Well, for one thing, maturity should be a difference. The, the level of maturity that's expected should be a, a large difference. I'm not I'm not saying that they should be allowed to bet on games. I'm just saying I'm not either. It's I'm not I'm not saying that either. It's like when I was at ESPN and we and I always refused to do this and, and upper management hated me. Well, they didn't hate me. They hated that I took this stand. People were not supposed to be on the internet. And I never disciplined anyone for being on the internet. No, unless I, unless it was some kind of appropriate that unless it was tied to them being on their not performing their job function, but we, we set people up with computers and give them the internet and then they're not supposed to use it. I'm simply and, saying, okay, so the maturity issue is fine. I'm simply saying, why should it be that hard for a college student to a college athlete to resist betting if NFL players have to do the same thing? You're missing I, I, my I, point. I, it's it's difficult. It's okay. where they're being placed in a difficult position. Well, if they, but you know what? Let me play the other side of this, Mark. If they want to get paid and basically have a free open market to be able to make money, then this is you have there are standards and rules with employment. And even though they're not technically employees, I I, I don't. Well, I complain. Yes, it would compromise not the integrity the of the game if they bet on the games. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> well, you're quoting that. I'm but saying you're... with everything that's generated from an entertainment standpoint to perpetuate gambling that's thrown in their faces, but they're the ones that aren't able to part. And it would be one thing if they could not gamble on college football, but they could gamble on everything else. That would actually make sense. Well, that, that would actually make sense. There's the difference. There's the difference, right? Uh, NFL players can bet on NBA games, can't they? I don't know. I would. I would think. So. I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know. I, I don't I, know. I, you know. We've well, talked about. Well, of this, course, I, there's an age situation. There's there's an age restriction that's by law that has nothing to do with college athletics or. Uh, so, so that's a factor as well. But if they're of age, if they want to bet on Major League Baseball or the NBA, they should be allowed to. I, I just, well, I guess, what I'm saying is, I don't think we need to to coddle these players and treat them like little kids. And and, and well, we we you know we're putting all these betting opportunities in front of you, and and we you know I know it's hard. I mean, don't bet. You know, if don't bet on college football, that's where we're being hypocritical. I understand telling them not to bet on anything, but you can't turn on any social media device or anything during the season that relates to college football and not see betting lines everywhere. I've never placed a bet in my life, Mark. OK, that that's not of interest to you. Well, OK. If it was, I still wouldn't. I just don't, I don't have, I just wouldn't. That's me, but I'm just let, saying let, like. Let's say you enjoy a good beer. We're going to have you work at a brewery, but we're going to tell you not to drink a drop of it. Let's That's not, what we're let's gonna not do. totally uh, 
let, let's not totally eviscerate the college system and 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 what being a college athlete is like. Okay, these players aren't walking into Kinnick and you see a huge gambling uh, casino billboard up on the television. That that everybody's got smartphones. Everybody has access to the same thing. Everybody else has access to. That's all I'm saying. You and I are seeing. We turn on game day or we turn on the television. We're seeing lines everywhere. And you turn on your phone, you see social media stuff, and you see advertisements for whatever these dumb betting sites are or Bet365 or what. I mean, I how many how many emails have you gotten from gambling companies about wanting to sponsor your channel? I mean, you and I both have gotten plenty of those. I think all probably all sports YouTubers get those. I'm just saying, um, they're if they're they're adults. I'm not, they are kids in a sense, but they are actually adults. I, I guess what I'm saying is this. They still violated the rules. So I have no issues with with punishment. That doesn't mean they're good rules. There can be bad it rules. There can be. True. It, there can be. But the rules are the rules, right? When they're in place, they are the rules. So let me ask you this. If, if you're going down the, the road and, and you said so you're in a 25 and you think it should be a 45, you're just going to go 45 and then tell the cop, well, I, you know, I don't agree with the speed limit. I mean, there are some things that you just have to suck up and say, well, it's unfair, but I have to deal with it. That's life. I will and have told the cop that everybody else is driving 45 miles an hour as well. But you probably paid the fine on that if he gave you a ticket. Yeah, I you? paid the fine. Yeah. Aside, so aside from two tickets in my life, I've paid every one. I want to make clear. I there are two I, I didn't pay. I understand what you're saying. I shouldn't go back to those states. Go ahead. And I can see why the rule is hypocritical. And by the way, for Alex in the chat, who says Corey doesn't get this one. Go back and watch our show with Tom Caker. We addressed this, and I, I explained it back then as well. Yes, it's a hypocritical rule. It doesn't make much sense to put that sort of a standard on college players to not be able to do these things with other sports that they have no involvement with. I'm simply saying it's not like it was unknown that the rule existed. So if you violate a rule, whether it's a team rule or an NCAA rule, you other people were following the rule. So you you should you deserve consequences. That's just how I that's just how I look at it. Um but you I missed my point. Okay. All right. Okay. My point is number one, of course. Athletes should not be betting on their sport. So I completely agree with that rule. Correct. However, I believe it to be hypocritical if they are of age to ban them from betting on any sports. I agree. Okay. And I'm simply saying until that rule changes, that's the rule whether it's unfair or not. And I will tell you that up until about what, about three years ago is when gambling be sports gambling started to become legalized in various States. This was roughly about three years ago. I worked at ESPN from 2001 on until 2020. And for most of that time that I worked at ESPN, talent wasn't allowed to, was not allowed to mention point spreads it was against every company. There were no point spreads on the bottom lines. There were no graphics with point spreads, nothing, zero. And if they did offer uh, a mention about a betting line, it was like tongue in cheek, wink, wink. This touchdown meant something, wink, wink. And then all of a sudden, the switch just flipped. And all of a sudden, oh, we can make a lot of money and so the gambling lines, they're, they're more prevalent than a team's record. You can't even find the team's record, but you got the gambling lines on the bottom line, and, and it's everywhere. Although on game day with play-by-play -play people, there still seems to be somewhat of a standard. They don't bring up lines during games. They don't. And, the... and they try to avoid it. There may be some of what you just said, that, that subtle – hint, hint with stuff, you know, the Scott Van Pelt bad beat type of stuff, but they don't, they don't just bring up. Sure. Lines. If for example, Kirk Herbstreet's doing a game that day, he's not allowed to pick the game. Well, no, I'm just, I, yeah, On I know what I'm, yeah. what I'm saying is there, you're also not going to hear Sean McDonough say, well, if he makes this field goal, that's going to be a, uh, you know, 
big for Vegas. I don't know about that. I, don't I hear know that, that all the time. That. Okay, you've heard that. I don't know that I've ever heard that. Oh, yes. Really? Again, I hear it now. Yeah, I know. 15 years ago, I didn't hear it. And when I did, it was Brent Musburger saying, this may mean something to someone, even though it's 42 to 10. Where is Brent Musburger now? Is he gone? Is he retired? Yeah, I think he's doing the Las Vegas Raiders radio play-by-play. Okay. Or at least he was as of a year or two ago. So what happened with him? Tell me the real story of what happened with him. Because he used to be he used to be kind of the guy on yeah. ESPN ABC. Did he yeah. just slowly get demoted? Was it just a result of getting older? What was he what, what was it? I mean, you were with ESPN when that all happened. Yeah, well, that doesn't mean I'm in the boardroom. So <laughs> but <laughs> but um that reminds me of some other things. But um he had the infamous uh What's her name? Kathy something. AJ McCarron's girlfriend at the BCS championship game in 2012. And he caught a lot of flack for this. And it was a bit creepy. He pointed out AJ McCarron's. So the game's getting out of hand. The game's boring. And they zeroed in on AJ McCarron's current wife, girlfriend at the time. She's rather attractive. And then Brent Musburger started to make some comments. And it if he wanted to make a comment that she's attractive, okay, whatever. But it, then it just kind of continued on from there and on and on. But the director did continue to show her. So it wasn't all just Brent Musburger. And this, this like, Twitter blew up that night. She became a national celebrity like that. Does what anybody would the remember her name? What could he have said on live television. What could he have said? He that said was stuff live? like... All right, because she's the quarterback's girlfriend. Okay, 16-year-olds out there, you know what you need to be doing? You need to be working on that uh, throwing yeah, game yeah. so you can get, so you can make out like that in five That's years. Good. He's making all sorts of comments like that. Again, that. the director's taking the shot over and over during a national championship game. So, yeah. What, why is there always wasn't there something what what was the controversy this last year? Was it JJ McCarthy's girlfriend and 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 something? I can't there was something that happened during the last playoff. That was obviously a national championship game. There's something that seems like there's stuff that, that happens with either weird interactions between play by play people or producers, cameramen, whatever. And it seems to always be happening in big games. I don't know if anybody else remembers what I'm talking about, but anyways. I didn't know about that. I forgot all of it. If I did know about that, I forgot all about it. Yeah. Sounds like the interactions I used to have to have with a certain cameraman of mine at uh, our Mississippi station, because I'd come back with the video of the Arkansas Mississippi state game. And there'd be, you know, 40 minutes wasted of, you know, things that I needed to bypass in the editing process. <laughs> And I'd say, okay, you're making this difficult for me, number one. Number two, if you get caught, you, you're representing our company. So enough of that. <laughs>